The Georgina portrait by Gainsborough is one of the most iconic things at Chatsworth. Georgina was famed for her love of extreme high fashion, complete with enormous feathered headdresses. When she died, she left her son with significant debt, a lot of it from her love of gambling and also fashion. The world's greatest collectors are not only defined by great wealth. Sotheby's takes you inside Chatsworth House, the ancestral home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Discover the passion that has driven 16 generations of the Cavendish family to create one of the world's most extraordinary art collections. Georgina was very much a superstar. She was a fashion icon, essentially, the wife of the fifth Duke of Devonshire. She had the most wonderful parties and was written about in the burgeoning newspapers of the time. Georgina was a Spencer, and there are parallels drawn between her and Diana, Princess of Wales, who was also a Spencer. She was an extraordinary person. Her popularity, her involvement with politics, which was very unusual for women in those days. The whole sexual thing was definitely part of her allure. She was very voluptuous. She had bad faults. She was a terrible gambler. She had an interesting marriage set up, to say the least. All of those things conspired to make her a remarkable person. It's no surprise that other people wanted portraits of her in the same way that collectors might have wanted to have war holes of Jackie Kennedy. The painting has had a long and very eventful history. It's a portrait that was originally a full length. It was owned by a school teacher called Miss McGuinness and she cut it in half to fit it above her fireplace, as you do with a Gainsborough. It didn't become famous until many years later. It was sold in the late 19th century for £10,000, which was then the most valuable work of art ever sold at auction. It was bought by Thomas Agnew, the dealer, and within 20 days it was stolen by a notorious international criminal, Adam Worth. Adam Worth's left with a painting that he can't sell because it's too famous. So he then had to hide it. And it wasn't until many years later he actually confessed to Pinkerton's detective agency that he got it and it was returned to the family. And to complete the circle of this extraordinary story, it was bought by the Chatsworth House Trust at auction at Sotheby's in the summer of 1994. I'm thrilled the paintings here. I think it's one of the most interesting because of its history, of its theft and all that, but really more than that because it's of Georgina. The most interesting thing about the Cavendish is that throughout history, they have been so extraordinarily perceptive about working with the greatest artists or artisans of their particular time. Famous British portrait painters from Gainsborough, Reynolds and, and others. All of those great portraits were contemporary in their own time. And even if you look at some of the portraits that have been commissioned by the Cavendish family more recently, and one thinks of the wonderful portrait by Michael Craig Martin of Lady Burlington, Laura, it's an extraordinarily powerful image. The Michael Craig Martin portrait of Lady Burlington is another fascinating piece. My parents asked us to consider a commission, a portrait, when we were first married. I chose Michael because he was an artist that I loved. I have always enjoyed his work and I really admire his practice. Well, it's a drawing that's put through a computer program where the face is broken into sections and each one of these changes colour through a sequence of 28 different colours. It's on a completely random repetition, so you'll never ever, even if you sit in front of it for 50 years without blinking, you'll never see the same colour combinations twice. It's an equivalence for living, these constant changes, and of course the psychology of colour means that Sometimes the person who's in the portrait looks angry and sometimes they look calm and sometimes they look beautiful and sometimes they look grotesque. And that's human nature, isn't it? I like the idea of people being able to place that portrait in the history of time. If you made it in five years' time, you probably wouldn't use that technology. 15 years ago, you wouldn't have the technology. So it's completely of this moment. When I first heard about it, I was very unsure that it would represent her or, 
looked like her. But then it was a sort of another layer of portraiture on top of all the lots and lots and lots of oil paintings of different styles. And then this took it on a whole stage further. I was completely stunned to think that it would come here to be with the portraits of Gainsborough and Lucien Freud. But I thought it was so adventuresome to agree to such an extremely contemporary thing to place amongst these traditional things. It's another stage in the long history of portraiture at Chatsworth. That's a wonderful way to collect because you're commemorating a person who you're fond of, who's in your family, to be a part of a, a long line of similar records.